Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And today is time for gas, which I always look forward to. Every five days or so, uh, we attempt genuinely approachable Sudoku. I try and do five puzzles, or five days worth of puzzles from the daily Sudoku channel on the Discord server, where Bill Murphy, Philip Newman, and Clover, each day one of them on rotation prepares a puzzle puts it out there. They've normally now been solved by 2,000 people before I get my hands on the puzzles because I do them a month behind. Um, and that's incredible. That's brilliant that these guys are getting so much viewing and traction. Um, nobody deserves it more. Now, what I'm going to do is read the blurbs from the Discord server, including the rules of the puzzle, all at once, and then attempt the puzzles one after the other. That's what I do. Uh, don't forget that we have gas apps that you can buy and 60 more puzzles by these same authors. Um, they don't cost very much and it's fantastic value for money, uh, along with all our other apps, which are also similarly value for money. Um, and they're all on the links under the video, along with Sven Sudoku Pad, the Discord server itself, um, our merchandise and our Patreon, where you can join us um, again, you can contribute tiny amounts each month, and we are very grateful if you do, because if a lot of people do, that keeps the channel going. And we have also, we provide um, rewards for Patreons, especially a monthly reward from the first of each month. Uh, there's a Sudoku hunt or something very like it, and that this month lasts, as usual, until the 20th if you want to enter the competition and be in with the chance of a prize. And the hunt this time is Tennis Anyone by Glum Hippo. Um, check it out because it's good fun. Now, let us go to the blurbs and read out what they say about this one is fascinating. This puzzle on screen is by Philip Newman. It's called Mr. Right Side. And what Philip said is, <laughs> nobody expects a musical number less jarring chord. Da, 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 da. So, and it gives me a tune to do this to, and I shall. Some grids in life are tough. They can really make you huff. Pencil marks just make you swear and curse. Or when you're feeling out of gas and your solves at an impasse, just remember you can bifurcate instead. And always look on the right side of grid. Do 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 do. Those are all the givens that I did. Do 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 do. If gas feels jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten. Your cursor's likely hovering over it. Forget about the hats in advance. I say congrats. A dino waits as long as you don't quit. And always look on the right side of X. Do do. Do 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 do. Starting on the left will just perplex. Do 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 do. Today's gas is a diagonal Sudoku. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits along the marked diagonals cannot repeat. Right. Now there are a few things I didn't mention, like normal Sudoku rules apply probably in all the puzzles we're doing, one to nine in every row, column, and box. The next is that there are hat times for the faster solvers. You get one hat with a certain fast time. They'll be on the um, in the description field with the links to the puzzles. And there's a two hat time for even faster times, and I'm on a decent run of those just beginning, so I'll be going for five two hat times if I possibly can today. And there's a dinosaur for anybody slower, which explains some of the hats and dinos in that Lyric, the other thing I want to say is that trying to explain how brilliant Monty Python is to your kids is quite difficult and reminds me of people telling me how wonderful The Goon Show is or Round the Horn. And when I've listened to those on Radio 4 occasional episodes from the past, they just make me cringe with how unfunny they are. So let's hope Monty Python isn't that unfunny to a new generation because I think they're marvellous. Anyway. The dinosaur for that puzzle was a learning Lucillosaurus, and we all learned something, including that I cannot sing. Uh, so we will move on to Gas Kansas by Clover. Let me introduce you to a place just down the road from me. 
the town of Gas, Kansas. Their water tower is painted red and labelled Gas Can, and the town motto is, don't pass gas, stop and enjoy it. Mark, I swear this is true, fact check me. Clover, I believe you. For today's gas, Kansas, normal 8x8 Sudoku rules apply. That is, fill the grids with the digits 1 to 8, so that, ah, this is 8x8 Sudoku, so that each row, column and 2x4 region contains each digit exactly once. Also, right, for every pair of digits separated by a bold region border, one of the digits is odd and the other is even. Interesting. So one of these is odd and one of them is even. Wow, I haven't seen that before. The dinosaur is a Kansan cartidocus. There's a bonus hat offer. One bonus hat for the first solver to include, along with their time, a good explanation of why this puzzle is 8x8 instead of 9x9. And Niverio apparently claimed that bonus hat. I mean, I'm out of the running. I would suggest that it must be impossible to make a 9x9 in which this rule applies. Um, and that is going to be because if you have down one box border, you would have nine cells on one side and nine cells on the other side, and there would only be eight even cells in those and ten odd cells, so you couldn't have them um, obeying the rule. That's not a clear explanation, and Neverio no doubt did it better, but it is nonetheless true, and I understand that. Right. Uh, the third puzzle. These are interesting today. Right. Third puzzle, Waiting Room by Bill. I've been making gas puzzles for nearly a year now, says Bill, and I'm still fascinated by this and really enjoy pushing myself to be better and come up with interesting nonsense. The question I tried to answer in today's classic Sudoku is what's the fewest number of givens I can have if I limit myself to spoiled as the necessary techniques will keep it fun and gas? I'm quite proud of this one and I hope you enjoy well, I, I'm not in the Discord server, I've got a printout, but it doesn't tell me what the spoiled thing is. So I don't know what Bill has limited himself to. It might well be no more than three of each given. Don't know. Possibly. Um, you may know, as I do, that the minimum number of givens in a classic Sudoku has been proved to be 17. Um, and clearly Bill has not done that. So he has got some greater restriction. There's 22 there. Normal Sudoku rules apply, and that's it. This is classic Sudoku. The dinosaur is a minimalist Micropachycephalosaurus, which is not a minimalist name, even if the, um, the size of their head was clearly minimal from that Latin name. Right, and then we go on to... We've got more Monty Python from Philip. The Ministry of Random Walks. As has been documented extensively in the past, we here at Gas Inc. take security very seriously to ensure that no one can break into our top secret labs twice the same way. The constantly... Ch <laughs> That's brilliantly funny. Um, the constantly changing path through HQ has been designed by one of our security cons consultants, the Ministry of Random Walks. Ministry of Random Walks? I wasn't expecting a third Monty Python reference in a row. Nobody expects a third Monty Python reference in a row. Ta -da! Today's gas is a thermo Sudoku. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along thermometers must strictly increase from the bulb to the tip. The dinosaur is a randomized rutellum. And, ooh, speed up thermo by Clover, who says, quick, let's go, get a move on, hurry up, shake a leg. Chop, chop, pick up the pace, get your skates on, solve this speed up thermo gas. If you're quick enough, the relativistic effects of solving at a tremendous speed may even slow your aging process, giving you more time for puzzles. I personally believe that solving lots of puzzles does slow your aging process, and that is why I don't look a day over 95. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along thermometers must increase, starting from the round bulb. Also, each pair of digits along a thermometer, counting from the bulb, must have a strictly greater difference than the previous pair. For instance, 1, 4, 8 is a valid thermo because the difference between 4 and 8 is greater than the difference between 1 and 4. However, 1, 4, 7 and 1, 5, 8 are not valid. Interesting. The dinosaur is an accelerated alwalkeria. Alwalkeria? Alwalkeria, I'm going to say. 
And those are the Discord blurbs for these puzzles. And now I'm going to go back to the first one and we're going to take them on. Um, fascinating amount of information on the right of this puzzle, nothing on the left, which would surprise you if you only do classics, but you will understand if you do diagonal Sudoku. Right, let's have a go at all of them and let's restart my clock each time. Let's get cracking. So two in the corner is naked. No, hang on, hang on, it's two, four, seven. Yes, it is still naked. I just got the set of digits that needed to go into box three wrong in my brain, but I got them right now. Sorry, that's a six. We get a three in the corner straight away. We do get a nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one down here. Now this is naked if you consider all the diagonals. Um, it's gonna clearly be a little harder to transition to the left side of the grid because we are always looking on the right side of the grid for clues. Okay, what's this? This is on a diagonal two, two or eight. One, six, four, seven, two, nine, three, five, or eight. That's three, seven, or nine. I don't know if this is a technique that's going to help. No, maybe I need to find some digit on the diagonals. There we go. There's a naked one. Eight, five, seven, nine in the row. One, four, six, three on the diagonal. That's going to sort out other digits. Sorry, that was a two that I was claiming was naked up there. And that sorted out those digits, and we can finish that diagonal. Now, this is now not an 8. Let's use this same technique. That is now a naked 8. 2, 8, 6, 7, 5, 1, 7, 4. That is 3 or 9. 1, 7, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. That is 5 or 9. So that's an annoying triple that I can't see how to disambiguate yet. Um, now, we must have got some information. There's a 2 in one of those. There's a 5 in one of those. Come down the bottom, there's an 8 right there. 1, 2, 3, 8. Now, 2 is in one of these cells, which fixes the 2 here. Um, that is now a naked 6. There's a 1, 9 pair over there. 7, 2, 5, 8 we can place in box 1. Can't do anything else. Two, six, seven, eight, nine. We can place one here. Uh, one, two, three. I think it could be a while before I get information about this triple. Um, so I will soldier on without it. Three, four, and five are the possibilities. Can't even get into the cells I'm trying to fill. One, two, three, eight, six is in one of those two. That's just five or seven. Cor central marks indicate the possible candidates in a cell, and corner marks where a, s a digit is confined to within a box. It's a very useful system of uh, marking, known as Snyder notation. One there. There's an eight. Right, that is the last eight in the grid. Eight, four, one, nine, six. So let's try this row. Oh, it's not doing it for me. Maybe it's this column. One, two, eight, three. I've I just missed something on the diagonal. One of those is a nine. That's slightly interesting. Yeah, there's an X-wing on nines with those. So we get a nine into one of those cells. Oh, a five is placed. Oh, so it's all about... Ah, oh, that's done it. That's done the diagonal. Right, so it was all about row six. Um, two and seven in those remaining cells. Now, nine. Yes, that's fixed one and nine. Then we know there was a nine there. I did that by X-winging earlier. Still a bit more to do. This bottom row needs a nine. Then we place six there based on the pencil mark. Six and four there. This is one and three now. And this is a seven, four pair. Can't do those, but that gives me a five here. Um, this is not a three, obviously, now. And this... Uh, there's something... Okay, that is actually a seven. There we go. So column four is done, and I just couldn't work out how... This is done, that's a five. This is not done. Actually, I still can't finish off box two. I've got one, four, two there. I can do the four. I can
can do nine here, three and six. Okay, this is going all right, but you never know with Philip. He sometimes springs a surprise with the time. Six and four, that's done three and four. If I could navigate to the right cells with my arrow keys, I would be feeling a lot happier about this. That is a two. Then we get one, three, six, six, three, and a one. There we go. Oh, two seconds under five minutes. So I feel confident of the time on that one. Let us see if I made it. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's okay. Sorry. I thought I was 5.58, but I was 4.58. The, the two hat time was six minutes. I thought I'd just crept in, but actually it was by 62 seconds. Okay, we go on to Clover's intriguing Gas Kansas and try again. Sorry, just stopped the recording by hitting the wrong button. Let's start again and get cracking. Okay, so... Oh yes, there's this rule. Uh, that is three or five. Let's start in box one. That's what we do with Clover when she comes. Oh, that is a three, four pair. So that's three to be next to, that's got to be odd next to even. Five, seven, eight live up there. This is a one, two pair. Well, oh, seven has to be next to two across the box border. I think this is going to actually be pretty easy, he said daringly. That can't be a one, so the one in this column goes there. This is in fact even and has to be a four. This is going to be even and has to be an eight. These two are a six and a... No, these two are a six and a two. They're not evenly spaced just because they're even digits. Um, yeah, it's fascinating actually. Let's keep going on that basis. We need a two somewhere. That is even, so it has to be a two. Then four and eight are over this side. That can't be a four. That can't be either. So there we go. I'm going to keep focusing on even digits to start with. One of those is a four. This has to be even and has to be an eight. That's going to put an eight there because it can't be there, even against even. These are both odd, three and seven. Two has to go there by Sudoku. Yeah, I do keep having to switch. That can't be six. So in fact, it must be odd. There we go. Okay. Keep having to switch the types of logic I'm using, which is a bit strange. Keep doing these evens because it really helps afterwards. Four has to be there, but this has to be even. See, that is good. One of these is eight. I know which one. Oh, hang on. No, eight could have been at the top of the grid. Um, this is even. That has to be a six. Okay, I think I've identified all the digits that have odd digits already placed looking over the border. So I'm going to try and do the rest by Sudoku. See how we get on. Eight, seven, three, four. Let's go up here. Six, eight, seven. That must be known. One, five, three. Uh, one, five pair there that I can't seem to do, but that makes that a seven. This is one or five, right? That sorts out my one, five pair. Down here, I've got three and one and seven, and that's sorted out the last pair. There we Ah, oh, it doesn't like it. Oh, I didn't think I did anything wrong, but I obviously did. Have I got a mistake? Six, if I put a nine in? It doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? I'm trying to find where I've disobeyed the rule. And maybe that's pointless. Maybe I should just start again. It doesn't feel like I've disobeyed the rule anywhere. Five, four, two, three, six, one, one, two. I can't see what I've done wrong here. Um, there, seven and one. Ah, oh, bother. And here. Oh, Mark, what have you done? Can it be fixed quickly? This is going to scupper my whole... That has to be a seven. 
Okay, let us assume that we've got all the even digits in the right place and get rid of the odds and try again. I think I probably have, but it's not exactly a decent way of solving this puzzle. I acknowledge that. Okay, I'm going to try again. Let's forget that being a one, especially, and that. Have I got any others? Okay. Now, this is a 3-5 pair. My goodness, I've made a hash of this. I thought I was doing absolutely brilliantly. Turns out I was doing absolutely terribly. 5, 3, 1, 7. I think this might have been a decent way of fixing it, but we will find out in due course. That's a 5. You see, it's not working. I can't believe this. So I've made, I've got to start again. Um, we'll add the time together. There'll be a clock running in the corner of the screen. My goodness, I've messed this up bad. Right, three, four, five, seven, eight. That's a one, two. We can do those. That's a five. These are both, now we need the evens here. I'm just doing the same again and hoping for a better result. I mean, Einstein's definition of madness, it is said, but... Oh, look, those are in different positions this time. So I may have just written those in the wrong way round. No, I didn't. No, I've written them in the wrong way round this time. Seven has to be next to two. That's a two. That's a six. No, this is right. Uh, where's two? It's got to be there. Three, seven, eight. Now, this needs to be even. This needs to be even. Uh, this needs to be even bother. This needs to be even. Why are they evens not coming as easily as they did last time? That's a 6-8 pair. <sighs> my goodness, I've really made a ricket of this puzzle. I'm going to lose all my two hat credit. Ah! Three, seven, eight, two, one. They have to be from four, five, six, not nine, six. That is a one. Five, seven, three. Um, now that's even, so that's odd. You see, that's how we get that done. Seven, eight, six, three. That's a five. If this doesn't work again this time, just you're going to see a man break into tears. That is six or eight. This is a three, seven pair. I remember that from last time. This now can't be four. Ugh. Um, it's unsurprisingly harder this time, probably because I'm doing it. Well, that does actually suggest that I'm doing it right rather than wrong. That has to be odd. There we go. Eight and four then. The trouble is now I remember bits of this path again. Can't be eight. Five. Oh, I remember this all too clearly. Seven, eight, five up there. That can't be one. This is seven. That works all right now. One and four here. Seven, five, four, eight. <sighs> that. No, I don't know. This is strange. That can't be a four. So I've got a three. That Oh, this has to be odd, but yes, it has to be three. Right. That is going to fix things. Seven, three. We've got this six, eight done. Um, now, these break down because of a two there. One, four, one, two. This must be right this time. OK, that was 3 minutes 14. I don't know what my overall time was. I'm guessing about 5 minutes 50. And I normally undershoot when I make those guesses. I did spend some time looking at... Ah, it's... <laughs> the two-hat time is 7 minutes. It is possible I've missed that, but it is also possible I've got inside. And you will know because my clock will have been running. And I don't know. And that's really weird. OK. Oh, what a mess. Anyway, I'm going to go on to Waiting Room by Bill and I'm find out from Mikko Kisai whether I got the two hats. He, they might even have to make a judgment on whether, whether my overall time was right. Okay, 
thanks for the generous time anyway, Clover. Let's restart the clock on this one. Let's get cracking. Okay, that's a one. That's one, four, nine. That's a triple. This is just classic, isn't it? I should remind myself of that before I begin. Four there. Uh, three, one, six, five. That is eight. That is seven in the corner. This is a two, four, nine triple that I can't hit. Six, five, seven, four, three. Uh, no, I can't do that. Seven, four, three. We can place one there, and one of those is a six. Three, one, nine. Two is done up here. Six is in one of those cells, so that fixes six down at the bottom. Then there's a six in one of those two. Three, two, one, four, nine, six. We've got eight and nine along the bottom. Actually, they're done. That's good. I could fill in a chocolate teapot quadruple there, but there's no point wasting the time. Something's going to have to disambiguate it. Um, that is now a 4-3 pair. I can do that. That's a 7-9 pair, which I can't do. That is a naked 8, so that's good. We've finished the top row suddenly. This is a 6-5 pair. This is a 3-4-7 triple. 5-8-9 and 1-2-6. Uh, 2 six, nine up here. Don't know what to do with those. 6 one, two, eight, seven. Five, three, two, nine, one. Six. I can place that here. Ugh. Don't know quite how to do these remaining bits and bobs now. Seven. There's a four in one of these. Is that's no use? One, two, eight. That is six or nine. Eight, seven. Oh, goodness. Um, oh, one, four, nine, triple makes that three. Ah, that's incredibly useful. That was great pencil marking. Although I had no idea that it was good when I was doing it. That's weird. One, two, nine. This, oh, what's this? One, two, or nine as well. Doesn't that give me a triple? Yes, it does. It places six and five in the row. Good. One of those is a one in that row. So we get a four, nine pair. Now we are going. Okay. Nine, nine comes out of there. Five goes here. Six goes here. This is a one, three pair. They're done. Nice. They're going to fix a lot of the middle box. And now I should be able to finish rows four and five completely. Looks like I can, maybe apart from this eight, seven pair. Correct. Four, seven, one, eight, three. We can put a six in this column and a two, nine and a one, eight. And that's a nine, that's a two, we can do five, six, finishing off now, four, five, three, nine. Oh yes, this seven, nine are done. Seven, four, eight, seven, and eight. There we go, three minutes, 39. Not, that's a very nice classic, actually. Not my fastest time on the classic, but it is. Um, and I don't know what the spoiler thing is. I tell you what I might do is I might write in the description field of this video both whether I did make the two hat time on the previous puzzle and what the constraint Bill had imposed upon himself in waiting room was. For now, I will move on to the Ministry of Random Walks and restart my clock. Let's get cracking on this. So, what's the longest thermo? This one, that is the full length. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. I do like this idea of a path through, well, through Gas HQ or whatever it is. Two and three are there. One, four, nine. Um, this can't be higher than six. So I get to do some good thing. Three or two, two or one. That has to be, or one due to that pair. And we've got seven or eight there. These are from seven, eight, nine. In fact, all of these th three are from seven, eight, nine. 
because those have to be a 156 set. So that's four, that's three, that's two, that's three, oops, that's two. Okay, now what about this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. Oh, this is a full nine as well. Philip, you're making this surprisingly easy for me. I had I miscounted that. Is this nine two? Yes, it is. Oh my goodness, a nine cell thermo is really quite approachable. Um, right, I suspect I'm finishing off now, but you never know with Philip, there can be a sting in the tail. That's a one two pair, this is an eight nine pair. That's, they can't be five and four, so that's a seven six pair with a five four pair there. That's a naked five, these are six and seven. Two, three, one. That is where five is in this column. Then I can do eight and four. There's a six, seven pair, making that a three, nine pair. That's a naked six, which is going to sort out all the pairings of six and seven that I came up with, including that one. There we go. That has to be a one, five, six are done at the top. That's not seven. Down here, we've got a two, seven pair. We can do the one, two pair on the left because we don't have to always look on the right side of this grid. Five, two, six. Um, no, do a row, this row. Seven, one, two. Then three, four, can't be done yet. Seven, one, eight, five, two. That's a three, six pair, they're done. That's a four, nine pair. Now I can do the three, four pair. Six, eight, nine, eight, five, and seven, four, and five, two, seven, six, four, five. That's a one. Uh, oh, that's finished. That's eight. Right, that does the whole of the box. Then nine there, three, nine, three, and eight. One of my fastest times on a Philip Newman puzzle ever. Two seconds under three minutes. The hat, the two hat cutoff was six minutes. Quite quick for a Philip puzzle, but I was 49% um, of that time he does in his head. Right, let's try speed up thermo. Now, the rule on these, on all the thermos, was that each pair counting from the bulb has a strictly greater difference than the previous pair. That's weird. Okay. On our marks, get set, let's get cracking. So, six, seven, nine, that one must go. Um, this now can't go to a seven, it must be a six. This must be an eight, because it can't be a seven. So, those top ones are done. I was thinking this three to nine was the place to attack. This can't be a five, because then we can't get the job done. Yes, these have to go up in one, two, three increments. Now that's very straightforward once you spot it. There we go. Just have to do the maths. Um, now the three then. This can be a four. It's going to have to be. This can be a six. It's the same deal with these, these V-shaped thermometers. They're all going to go up in one and then two increments. So three and five there, two and four there. Okay, let's do some regular Sudoku now. One, five, four, eight, nine. That can't be six by thermo rules generally. That's a four. That's got to be two. So that's five. Six, two, four, one, nine. This is a seven, three pair. The thermo rules tell me which they are without needing to worry about the arithmetic involved. Two, six, one, eight, five, three, and seven. Um, actually, that one five pair's done, but we don't find out yet if we have a three in the corner. Nine and one are done there. Then two, four, and eight to go. That has to be higher than six. Let's just use the thermo rules. That can't be a six, but I'm using the special rule there to deduce that that's an eight. Two and seven here, one and nine to complete the row. Three, six, nine. I can place six in this column, but not the others. 
then I can finish row 3 and row 4 as a result. Then I can finish column 4 and probably column 6. Maybe not. Not quite all of it. That's a 4. 3. We didn't get a 3 in the corner there. We do get one down here. Party time for the 3 in the corner. 9 and 8. That's 2 or 7. So is that. And we've just got some pairs that unwind very naturally in the corners. There we go. Oh, it doesn't like it again. It's because it's Clover. What am I doing wrong, Clover? Have I just mistyped a digit this time? Yes, I put a three there where it's a two. There we go. Whew. Nine seconds under three minutes. Clover has tried to take the position as my nemesis, but has not managed, I believe. And Philip has hung on to it. Oh, that was the last one. Gosh. So there we go. Those are our five puzzles, and they were great fun today. Um, I put myself through the ringer, especially on the clover puzzles, and especially on the first one. But I really enjoyed that. That's a lovely canter through the gas. I do always look on the bright side, and often on the right side of gas. Even though, when you have a clover puzzle, the best tip is always look in box one. Anyway, thank you for watching. We will be back with more Sudoku tomorrow and I'll be back in about five days with more gas. Um, genuinely approachable Sudoku. Bye for now.